All right, Supercon 2018, please welcome to the stage, Brittany Karbowski. <laughs> Bex Taylor Klaus. <laughs> and Josh Keating. <laughs> I like that like meter that <laughs> <laughs> All right, settle down now, settle down. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. Thanks for having us. Yes, Excellent. How's the weekend going? It's been great. Yeah. I've been meeting a lot of fans and This is the weekend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Yeah. Where am I? <laughs> well, as I was explaining earlier, um, Basically, uh, Voice 101 was about how to get into the voiceover industry. Voiceover 102, how to stay there once you finally made it. And Voice 103 basically is Why did about. I miss 102. I need tips on that. <laughs> <laughs> there was some good advice. Um, but 103 is basically where you see the industry going. Um, okay. Like, what are your thoughts? Um, what do you think of uh, online auditioning sites and things like that? And as far as, um, you know, where you see things basically landing. So, Josh? Okay. Well, um, there's a lot, of, a lot of good questions in there. Um, <laughs> I would say that I see a lot more decentralization going on in voiceover. Um, before, you, you had to live in LA or New York or uh, you know, one of the main hubs, and that was really the only way that you would even get work. You'd have to have an agent, you'd have to audition, um, and to get an agent, it would, it, you know, that was an ordeal all in itself. And now with the internet, because you don't have to have a million dollar studio, you know, you can, you can get some decently priced gear and set up a decent enough uh, booth in your house and, and communicate with people via the internet. And there's also, there's also fewer barriers to entry in terms of not having to be uh, on a network show. You don't have to be on a network show to make it in voiceover anymore. I feel called out right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not calling you out at all. I mean, that's most of what I do too. But um, I've seen a lot of people come up making their own content. Um, I, I see that's, that's the biggest thing I think I would say is that it's, it's becoming much more decentralized. and YouTube and kind of changed the game. Completely changed the game. Complete, it, it changed the game for a lot of things, not just, not just voiceover. It changed the right. game for music. It changed the game for, for films and how we watch them. It, it's taken so many people away from watching TV because now they're watching uh, channels on YouTube. So that's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal and it's definitely changing how things are made. A lot of budgets are, are coming down on, uh, on the network side to have to compete with, with uh, much more cheaply produced content. Um, yeah, stuff like that. I, I see a lot of that happening. Yeah. And there's some really cheaply produced content that actually is high quality. That's right. Like, like what, what, what have you noticed? What, what examples would you give us that? See, you ask me this question and my mind goes blank. <laughs> I, have an, I have like one in my mind until the question get a, gets asked and then I'm like, oh, no, done. I think <laughs> give an example is like a magic uh, mind wipe. Where as soon as you, you have it in your head and as soon as it's like, oh, let me have an example, it's like exactly. empty brain. It's happening it's like I, when I you're at the signing tables where, where a fan has come up to me and said, hey, can you, you know, say one of such and such's favorite quotes? And I'm just like, um, <laughs> Every time uh, I have like three in my head, and then someone asks for my favorite quote, and I'm like, uh, huh? <laughs> Well, I mean, if you think of anything, you can certainly interject. <laughs> and, um, I can interject. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Brittany? What, what are your thoughts on this? Um, see, I mostly do anime. Um, and I've actually been working in Texas for going on 14 years doing anime. Um, and I, so my, my world's a little bit different um, when it comes to this stuff, but when it comes to that, um, because of the internet, you don't have to be in the studio anymore. You know, they can source connect. You can be at a convention and record your stuff, you know, as long as I got, as long as you have the mic and the source connect and, yeah. you know, you can do that. It, it's actually made it a lot easier in that way. Um, I also think that the characters are changing, you know, like mm. we kind of touched on it in the last one, but, um, you know, women are a lot more prevalent in it, and uh, they actually have, like, main roles. They're not being saved all the time, or, like, they're not, yes. you know, that kind of thing. Um, so that has changed a lot, too. Um, like, Attack on Titan has, like, equivalents in there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, uh, yes. You make a really good point, too, because this allows a lot more different people of different... Um, 
from different places to tell their stories. Places um, or ideas or um, stories that maybe a network, you know, who's going to invest a whole bunch of money in something would be too afraid of doing something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's like, I, I guess that would be audience fragmentation. Yeah. Whereas before you would have everybody watching three or four networks and now because there's so many, there, there, there's so many different avenues for you to enjoy content that you can really find something that is tailor-made exactly to what you want to see because they don't have to fight for that budget. They don't have to make it super mainstream appealing to, to get that money because you're really just really hyper-focused targeting an audience. And right, right now we're in a place where marginalized and, and minority communities are begging for a voice. Mm -hmm. and. Cartoons are a great way to provide that voice. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, you can say so much with so little with animation. Um, and it's wonderful that that's, that's available now to almost anyone. I mean, really, you just have to have the drive, you have to have the heart, and, um, you know, the, the ability to just go out there and do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's funny because also, as far as video games go, um, the game is changing as well. Um, yes. During E3, I saw that there is some kind of game Sony's coming out with, where um, it's from the people who made Little Big Planet. If you ever heard of that game before, yeah, um, where you can just basically make your own games, but you can create these characters and then record a, a, a voice through the controller and make your own voices for the characters. So I mean, it's opening up the doors for so many different things like that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I myself. Um, I actually do work in the voiceover industry as well, but not on the level of you guys. I, I hope to get there someday. Um, but that's how I started was uh, basically I've been doing voices all my life and my friend said I need to get a voiceover demo, so I did. And um, I went online to a site called Voice123 um, where basically you do online auditions and I was discovered by an animation company in Costa Rica uh, called Rocket Cartoons. And um, they produced an animated series called Yum Yum and You. I did 78 episodes of that. And um, that can be seen, like, I think on Comcast streaming or some, some, something like that. And my work for that has just been multiplying from there. And I've been doing all of this from Central Florida um, in the walk-in closet of my bedroom, <laughs> you know, with a, a setup that I created myself. Yeah, that's... Uh Mobile recording or, or home recording, it, like I think everybody's saying up here, has gotten so much more accessible to everybody. I mean, I did, I did a session in my hotel room today, or no, what today, Saturday? I don't even know what day it is. Yesterday. And he posted a very funny video about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I made a pillow for it. I made like a whole pillow and, uh, and, and comforter for it to, to minimize the reflections in the room so you don't have echo, so yeah. the, the recording space sounds nice and dry. And, uh, and I had to Source Connect in. Source Connect is basically a very high quality Skype. It allows them to, uh, to basically direct you over the internet. They hear you in real time. They record you on their end and, uh, and you hear them in real time. And, uh, and that stuff goes straight to broadcast. So I was able to, because I, I do promos for a show called Extra. And so I have to do that every day. Every, every day, no matter where I am, I have to do that job. And that used to be what in the business was called the golden handcuff because it was mm. a steady gig and you, you usually are under contract for a few years at a time, which is great. You don't really find a job like that in the entertainment industry at all. Yeah. But it doesn't exist. What happens is that you were locked down to your place. So if you were making a great living doing promos, you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't go on vacation. You couldn't do anything because... Uh, like you couldn't even take time off because that's, that's, you know, they need it right then when they need it. Exactly. But now, because stuff is cheap and small, I, I can fit m my whole studio set up in this bag. Um, not this one, but different one. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's gotten so much easier to do that, and it, and it allows you to take stuff on the road. I mean, if we have an idea, um, and, like, let's just say we want to make our own content, I can bring my whole setup over to wherever you're at, and we can Don't do it. Don't give away our secrets. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that's, it's getting much more accessible for, for anybody, and making your own content is huge now. Yeah. I mean, I tell this story to, to friends of mine at cons because a lot of people probably know this guy. I have a friend named John Bailey, who, um, he's the voice of the epic trailers. Um, he does a lot of stuff. And he's out in LA now, and he's working with us. He's, he's you know, shoehorned his way into the big leagues. And I knew him as a con guy. 
He was a, a fan that would come up to people at cons and interview people for his podcast. And, you know, he just, you know, a lot, lot of guts. And he, he just would walk right up to you and, and, and really funny and do voices and do these interviews. But that's how I knew him. He was just a guy at a con that was doing interviews for his podcast. But he was making his own content constantly and really pushing his channel and doing all of that. And now he's out in L.A. And now he's doing stuff with us. And that's what it's he's, about, it's the hustle. He's, he's hustled his way into it because he made his own content. And he didn't have an agent. He didn't have any of that kind of stuff. He... He just made a presence for himself online, and that got him, that got him noticed. Yeah. That's, that's, that's something that anybody can do. That's very true. I mean, it's, one of the things is whenever you're offered an opportunity in voiceover, if you think you can't do it, say yes first, and then figure it out later. My dad always used to tell me that when I would audition for any kind of uh, uh, commercials when I was like a little kid. My like, parents used to tell me that it just had nothing to do with, the act, with acting. Well, yeah. Just say yes in, yeah. In, and then figure it out. Yeah, my, first, my very first big gig I ever got when I first got onto um, the online thing was, it was called Language Learning with Spider-Man. And yeah, uh, yeah I, actually, I actually got to be Spider-Man. I got Dude, to be Peter Parker. we, we yeah, I was, are I was just, in a club. I was going to... I, I almost didn't mention it because mine wasn't... <laughs> Dude, it, don't, don't it was an educational. It club. It was, thank you. Love it. I, Accept that, it. That, that See, means a lot to me. It's a very exclusive. Thank you. Like thank you. And 10 you're 10 one of my favorite portrayals, thank thank portrayals of character so too. I appreciate that. Thank you. But uh, but yeah, basically they said, hey, here's the thing. I uh, we we got this gig with Marvel, and uh, I want to make it happen. I don't have a lot of money. Can you do the different voices? And so basically, I did all the voices. I did every male voice in the thing. I did Peter Parker, Uncle Ben. Um, it, was, it was the origin story of Spider-Man, and um, I also created the sound effects, because, wow. uh, because that's what the guy said. He said, can you also do the sound effects? And I went, yep, I sure can. <laughs> okay, so what's this Audacity program I'm hearing about? Um, which is now my best friend. Um, yep, yeah, I, I basically went out and, and recorded sounds. I, I, I recorded my own web um, blast and everything, because I couldn't... I, I couldn't um, you know, I couldn't use any copyrighted sounds or, or music or anything. So I, I found, okay, it kind of sounds like a bullwhip. So let's take a bullwhip and like speed it up really fast and then put like a sound to it at the same time. And then I made my own web blaster sounds. That's awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, I was terrified as I was doing it because I'm like, oh my God, you know, all this responsibility is on top of me right now. And I had just started this stuff. Um, but you know what? That snowballed into everything else. As soon as I had that credit that said Marvel, um, and I also work for Disney and Universal, so um, I had those three things as well. It just, it just kind of multiplied from there. Yeah, sometimes you just got to take that leap. As scared as you are, you just got to do it. Yeah. There's, uh, at, at some point, you'll, just, you'll, be at a, you'll be at a crossroads and you'll have to just make a decision and, and stick with it. Cool. Sometimes that's the hardest thing. That's so true. That's so true. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. True. Do you guys have any other thoughts as far as... Um, we can open up to the Q&A. Asking if, if I have any other thoughts is a dangerous game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very dangerous game. You have to be more specific. I, you know, throw caution to the wind. <laughs> no. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> All right. Go back to the basement. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got pinball in there. It's fun. Exactly. It's we got fun. pinball now. We're good. Okay. Well, if you guys don't have any other uh, thoughts on the topic... Yeah. Um, I guess we can go to the Q&A. If you guys want to uh, come up and start uh, queuing in front of the mic. Yes. Uh, again, yeah, queuing, please. Queuing, <laughs> queuing. Queue, Q&A. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> one question only, please. Yes. Um, <laughs> would you like to join, jo would you like to join my orange juice cult? <laughs> um, I try to stay away from orange juice related cults. If you're doing an apple <laughs> juice one, then... We might have Look, some... Look, uh, OJ leaves a bad taste in my yeah. mouth. <laughs> well, I'm very disappointed in you. <laughs> Most people your are. Cult. I'll join your cult. Thank you. I would <laughs> you concentrate before you answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> that was a juicy no, though. Ah. Uh, we have punishing senses of humor. Tropicana. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite things be being part of the the voiceover industry in general. By the way, I love Shiro and Pidge. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Um, favorite part of being in the industry in general, uh, I mean, I've always loved 
anime and now I can be part of it. That's kind of like living a dream. Um, and just being an actor was always something that I enjoyed and I get to do it and, and make a living at it. So I, I feel that's very rewarding. Um, coming to these and meeting people that are actually a fan of what you do is also really rewarding. And that's like, I'm like, they're starstruck, but I'm starstruck because I'm humbled by that. So humbled. Because I'm like, I'm not worthy, you know? Um, so yeah, I think that part. I'm gonna echo that. There's something about meeting fans that has you feeling both, I'm not worthy, I'm so humbled, and also I am a god. <laughs> so it's a really, really great feeling. Um, but my, I think what I love most about being in the voiceover industry is that it's something new. It's, it's a new medium for me to, ex to explore and, and inhabit. It's not like live action acting, which is all I'd done until now. And it's, it's just a really fun new challenge. Hmm. I would say that I love, I love the people. I love the people that I work with. And there's, uh, there's, there's so much, I, I, I was also on the on-camera side of it. And uh, I mean, I don't know if you can, if you'll agree with me on this, but there's, and, and I'm, I'm not at all making- Chances are I of, won't just be contrarian. Well, there's a lot more ego in the on-camera world. And, and there's a much- How dare you, I'm a god. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm not directing this toward you at all. But you are a god. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, there's, it's so much more laid back in voiceover. Like, just, just the, the attitudes tend to mesh better. Um, it's, I, I love it. And the other thing is that I can play parts that I would never get cast to play on camera. Um, if, if Voltron was an on-camera show, I never would have been cast to play Shiro because I'm not, like, towering tall and this wide and, and, and with a jaw like this, and I'm not Japanese. But, I mean... In voiceover, can you, can you sound like the character or can't you is really what it comes down to. And that's really freeing because it, it allows you to play against your physical type. It allows you to inhabit characters that you never would have gotten a chance to play. And I love that. And I don't know if I can speak for the two of you, but I know for me, I always wanted to be a cartoon character when I was a kid. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Yeah, and, and adding on that, I, that's a very good point. Like, uh, I totally agree with that because... I mean, like, I get to be boys all the time. Yeah. I'm not, I could never be a boy on a stage, especially not one with muscles. I might be able to pull <laughs> it know? off. I could be like a little boy on the stage, but well, not. You could pull it off. I've seen you doing push-ups. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. it. That is cool. That was a really good point there. And not only that, but you, there's no fear of aging out of that character as well if it's a character with longevity, you know, as long as you sound like that. I mean, think of June yeah. Foray, you know, she was working, you know, up until her 90s. That's Marge true. is going to be working until she dies. <laughs> and then they're going to hire another Marge. Yeah. Because yeah. Simpsons is never ending. <laughs> God willing. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> What's up? Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> What inspired you guys to do voice acting? What keeps you going? Yeah. Um, I always wanted to be a cartoon character. <laughs> and Same. what keeps me going is I get to be a cartoon character. I wish I had a better answer for that. I'm just a very simple-minded person. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I, I actually... I, my dad used to... I don't want to get him in trouble now. It's probably too late. <laughs> my, my dad used to uh, check out, like, the, the, this is when, like, they had big records. He would check out the record soundtrack for, like, Disney movies at the library, and then he would copy them for me illegally. <laughs> and so I would, I would you Statute know, but I could, of limitations yes, is over, you're good. But I would just, I, I, would, I would love listening to those. And, and then he would also buy me these, uh, there would be the books with, like, the cassette that came with them, so that, like, when it would beep, you would turn the yes. page and all that, and you would read those. And I would love listening to those. And that, I, I, would, I would listen to those to fall asleep. It was so comforting to me. I mean, I even listened to those into my teenage years. Like, the, the, the same cassettes that, you know, five-year-olds listen to. I just, because there was just something really comforting about hearing the story like that, and just hearing it like that, and putting all the images together in your head. And then I had the, uh, my fifth-grade teacher. My fifth-grade teacher was Mr. Salas. He was awesome. He was uh, my favorite teacher, even to this day. And he would always, we would always come back in from lunch recess and everybody was, you know, they'd all been playing for an hour and everybody was sweaty and tired and, and rowdy. And he would read a chapter of a Raw Dahl book. Mm. And so I, every day I was looking forward to that next chapter. He would read it with all the voices and all of that. And he was fantastic. And, um, you know, he was, he was just, he was my fifth grade teacher. But every single day at, at lunch, I ran in and I couldn't wait to hear the next Raw Dahl chapter. Aww. And that got me really loving reading even more than I already did. But 
I, I loved hearing that. I loved hearing a story told like that. And, um, you know, I read to my kids. I read, my, read to my kids and I do all the voices for them. And, and I love passing that forward. I mean, that's, that's kind of what keeps me going is, is seeing the future generations who, who enjoy it. I mean, when we go into the booth and when we work, we, we go in and we do the job and then we kind of forget about it. We just leave it there. But we don't really realize that that work that we've done has a life beyond what we did. And, and I mean, like, like you guys have both said, like we've been at these cons and, and a lot of you are coming up to us and telling us how much this has helped you through a really difficult time in your life or how much this character has meant to you. And, and that's, that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me loving doing this because in, in some small way I'm helping somebody that I don't even know through some hard time in their life. That's, that's amazing. That's just knowing that, that I did that. It's, you want to keep doing that. And, and plus it's really fun to... to to basically get paid to pretend, you know. You're an inspirational human being, and well, I feel so you. selfish right now. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Um, when I was a kid, I, I was only allowed to watch, like, a limited amount of TV at a time. And I always wanted to watch Wizard of Oz because I was in love with Judy Garland. Mm. And um, I, I would try to shove my golden retriever into a basket. <laughs> and I walked around with like this heating blanket that was broken, that was yellow. And I would like, you know, be like, come on, Toto. And I would hide under the, under the table with my ruby slippers. <laughs> so, um, but I, that inspired me to want to do musical theater, which is kind of how I got into this. And um, it's always just been acting is my passion and my drive. And I just don't think I could be myself without being able to create like that, I guess. Um, and it is really rewarding to come to these. And like you said, um, that also is enough of a reward that you're actually making some kind of dent in the universe. It, it's mm. kind of awesome. So. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, hello. Hey. Um, I've, if, what are your opinions on the past Voltron series? I, I liked the first one. That, that's what I watched when I was a kid. Um, I didn't really remember a lot of the finer points of the story because, you know, I was like three or four. Like, I, I was just watching big robots fight, and, and I loved it. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then I, I really am not familiar with the later iterations that came after that. that. That's mainly the one that I watched. And then since being on the show, I've, I've gone back and I've watched some Beast King Go Lion. I love the intro. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys, you guys got to look up the uh, the Beast King Go Lion intro. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, I I, I like the old show, but I, I love where it's going. The new one. I uh, gonna get myself in trouble as I usually do. I the only Voltron I've I've actually watched watched is the new Voltron, and the only other one I've seen a few episodes of Voltron of '84. The stuff that's on Netflix with the introductions by some cast and crew. And from what I've seen, there's no contest new over old any day. Mm -hmm. I'm biased, I, I like the new one, too. Well, I mean, they had room to improve it, and it got improved, you know? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look, it's more fleshed you, out. The very first Voltron 84 episode I watched was basically the entire premise of that episode is Alora can't stop fainting or is just fainted the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, why? Now she's a badass warrior yeah, princess. Yeah. Let's go yep. back to that. Can we do that one? Yes. like that one. I agree. So much more of an interesting character. So much more interesting. And Pidge. Yes. Yeah. Pidge has got Pidge is no like longer a, like a, a gremlin. Well, not, not as much of a gremlin. <laughs> what are you calling a gremlin? <laughs> 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 All right, thank you very much. Uh, Hi. Let me just lower it. Okay. I'm going to have to stand like this. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on pay-to-play sites such as Voices123 or Voices.com? I, um, I don't use them because most of the work on that is non-union, and uh, or I think probably, yeah, the vast majority of it. And, and I'm union, so I can't do union work, uh, non-union work. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't use them. I haven't had a need to use them, but... I would, I would think that in some way they probably fill a purpose. I mean, you, you seem to have started your career off of one. I was going to say, my, my career actually yeah. was started, you know, with voice one, two, three. Um, I will say this. I'm, it, it seems to be shifting as far as how easy it is to get work on there now because the equipment's getting a lot cheaper. And it seems like that it's becoming more actually pay to play. 
don't know. It, oh, yeah. Well, it was always pay to play. There's another one that's like. Uh, yeah, voices.com. They, they've had a pretty bad reputation for, for uh, basically advertising a job for a certain rate when they're actually telling the client that it's going to be this rate and so they're double dipping by charging you yes. commission but so also like charging a much larger share of that job that normally would have gone to you but they're taking it and still charging you commission um, a lot of Uber. people have been it's mad the about Uber that. of the yeah. voiceover world yes yeah and yes that was shots fired <laughs> Lyft all the way I like Lyft yes I wish I they still had the mustache too. On the car. No, that was right? my favorite part. I miss those yeah. mm-hmm. um, I, I will say, at the very least, it's a way to get discovered because that's how you know I was discovered and how I've got the work that I've had. I've been working consistently in voiceover for over ten years now, um, as far as that goes, thanks to Voice One Two Three. And without moving to California sure. or New York or Chicago or Texas, you know, that's one of your best ways to do it. Um, the important thing is to put an audition that's interesting, it's short, and expresses a lot of different types and voices. Um, also think of whatever your focus wants to be, whether you want to be character or commercial. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. Um, I wanted to know if, it, if you guys could choose a song for your characters, what song would you choose? Like a theme song. <laughs> Despachiro? Yes! I mean, you already sang it. Huh? You, you already sang it. Yes, I did. Despachiro. And now pinched it. Um, oh, I have so many options. Uh, well, that's, that's too easy. Yeah, that's true. That's too easy. Like, my first thought is, like, uh, bass drops the second she walks into the room. <laughs> like, some, like... <laughs> Don't you want a bad bitch like me or something crazy <laughs> like that? Just something super, like, not what you would expect from Pidge. Yeah. Just because I think it'd be funny, and I think she would think it'd be funny. Absolutely. Um, but it's not easy being green. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. And, um, Brittany, I want to ask you, do you play Icarus in uh, Heaven Lost Property? Yes, that is me. Yes. Oh, so what song would you pick for Icarus? I'd pick her song, Falling Down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. She has one. That's awesome. Hey, hey. I guess I'm up now. Yes. Um, this is a question more directed at Josh. Okay. Um, I was going to say Josh and Bex, but you kind of answered the question earlier, sort oh of. Oh, God, what did I do? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it was going to be about um, how do you feel about reinventing characters? Like, you've played Spider-Man sure. and Shiro now. Mm-hmm. Um, like, because you said you watched, like, one or two episodes of Voltron 84, so I guess this doesn't really apply as much. But, like, how would you feel about, like, reinventing like the characters of Spider-Man or Shiro. Sure. Um, with Spider-Man, I really felt an obligation to honor canon because that was something that I grew up reading. And that's a, that's a character that has lived long before me and will live long after me. And there are certain tenets of the character that, that really kind of have to shine through, no matter what. No matter, no matter what new situation you're putting Peter Parker in, he is a certain way and I always heard him a certain way in my head that was inspired by the comics and so I really wanted to try to faithfully recreate as much as possible the Peter that I had in my head from reading the comics and I felt like I had an obligation to fans to do that as well because you know you can't I I didn't want to kind of walk into this house and and just kind of rearrange all the furniture and say this is Peter now when it's like I kind of wanted to honor that. I mean, I guess that would be Parker Luck, right? But um, I, I really wanted to honor uh, the, the original vision of Peter. So that, I didn't, I, I still put my own personality into it. I still put my own vibe on it. But the, the core motivations of the character were still very much the same. The core personality traits. With Shiro, I felt a lot more freedom. Because even though there was a canon for his, his counterpart, in Voltron 84, it was not Shiro, it was Sven. And... Yoo-hoo. V- yeah, Yoo-hoo. Very, very different character. And they made it very clear from the beginning that that's not what they were going for in the show, that he wasn't going to have an accent, that his name was going to be Shiro, he was not going to be Sven. And so, at that point, I felt a lot, a lot more freedom to just kind of... to establish something different, to just go, 
go with how I saw the character, based on what I read uh, in the audition, based on how he looked, because I saw a couple early drawings of him, and based on, you know, just, just what I wanted to do. And so I feel like I've had a lot more of a hand in helping build his personality from the ground up. Um, obviously, the bulk of it comes from the writing. I'm not taking credit for that. I mean, I, it's, it's very easy for me to come in and be Shiro because the writing is so good. Mm. It's, I'm, I'm really just kind of channeling what's there. But like I said, I've, I've, I felt a lot more freedom in, in creating or helping to create that character uh, than I did with something that was so established like Peter. And I know that I already answered this, but again, uh, with, with Voltron, I knew that there was an original and I could have looked it up but I didn't want to because it's, it felt like they wanted something new for this round. And so I wanted to go in blind and do it my way and see if that's what they were going for. And it worked. And it was. Mm. It is. I'd say it worked. <laughs> Aw, thank you. I definitely agree. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Next, please. Hello. Hi. Um, okay, this is like for everyone, but also, uh, Bex, I love you uh, so much. Um, <laughs> um, for voice acting, is voice acting like your favorite, like, is it like, yes, please give me more voice acting, or is it just kind of like, go with the flow, whatever comes your way, you take it? <laughs> Por qué no los dos? Yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit of both. say, like a Russian mafia member, it has to happen. Don't make it weird. I will make it weird for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, it's, it's both of that. Yeah, I want, it's like, give me more, more voice acting. I love it. Um, but at the same time, I got to eat and I got kids to feed. So it's yeah. like, if a stinker of a project comes along, but it's paying all right, it's like, yeah. all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll still do my best and try to, try to make it fun. Understandable. I don't have kids to feed, but I, I am a kid and I need to be fed. So. <laughs> I have a kid to feed. So you are a kid to feed. Line. I, I Priorities. Have a kid to feed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ah, we don't have all those orange juice powers. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, hello. Hi, um, I'm an aspiring actor, and I'm going to be auditioning for a uh, theater uh, theater college soon. Oh, break a leg! <laughs> Congratulations. Um, so I was wondering, when you're approaching uh, any audition, uh, or when you get a role, what is the prep work slash tactics that you use um, to prepare? Every character is different, and every character needs to be prepped differently and treated differently, and and. In my opinion, each character is a living, breathing being that you get to inhabit, and so you have to treat them accordingly. You can't, like, I, I can't go in and treat, like, my Scream character like I treat Pidge. Mm -hmm. It just won't work, and I can't do it vice versa. So you have to kind of sit with your character for a minute, figure out exactly who they are and how you want to inhabit them, and find a way that you love them and a way that you respect them. Otherwise, the audience is going to be able to tell that you don't care. Mm -hmm. So you have to make yourself care in order to make anyone else care. Yeah. You also have to make specific choices. Mm -hmm. You can't be broad mm -hmm. because broad is just BS. Like everybody will see right through it. It'll, it'll, it, it'll be flat. Mm -hmm. The more specific you can make your portrayal, the more, the more engaging it's going to be. And that only comes with really, like Beck said, just sitting with the character. Think about the weirdest questions yeah, that you would say, ask your ask character. Weird questions. There's like a director, I think his name was Mike Lee, who has like a list of questions that you would ask your characters, like a hundred questions, and, and like that, that'll inf help inform stuff, and it's all weird stuff, and, or like something, give your character a secret. It doesn't even have to be in the script. Give them something that they can have, that, that they can hide, or, or whatever, you know. I had a character that uh, from the get-go, I, I gave her a secret, and it ended up paying off the second season, they ended up writing it in because they were like, you've been doing this for two seasons. We're going we're gonna to give you, like, we're going to throw you a bone. Yeah. So, like, as, as long as you have something going on underneath the surface, it's, you're always going to be engaging. Mm -hmm. right. I guess, um, because they said that so well, I don't even know I could add anything <laughs> to that. Um, but if you have a cold read or something, and a lot of times with our uh, with voiceover for anime, time. it's almost all nothing but like cold read instant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they'll they'll give you that and the character description. I'll get like a little picture, and then they'll be like, "Go!" So you don't really have that much time. Um, so it's good to like have some stuff in mind behind that already, maybe some t a toolbox of things I try to say, um, like some go-tos, like uh, certain characters might have these things, and like, so I feel like I have like a toolbox or a file cabinet, and then I'm like, oh, it's like this kind. 
Um, and then awesome. also, it's good to warm up. It's really good to warm up. A lot of people go into auditions and you're like, they, it was the first time they spoke that day or something. Oh. And, and you, you know, so it's good to kind of warm up and, you know, um, like if I'm playing a boy character, I like will talk the entire ride up to Dallas like that, or like if Black I'm have to, yeah, for Black Star, or like if I have to do something in, you know, with a British accent, you know, I'll I'll just do that for a while, or walk, you know, annoying everybody in the house. Yes. Um, uh, you can you can also like if you want to practice like Walla or something like that. Uh, a tip that I was given a long time ago is to like turn off the lights, rearrange your furniture, run into some stuff, and be really ridiculously loud about it, just as <laughs> just as crazy as you could be. And it actually, for me, taught me Walla. Like, it helped me with that. So, um, My poor toes. Oh, <laughs> right. That's okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you very much. I, uh, I actually learned all my grunt work and everything from this guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I had <laughs> no you. idea what I was doing when I first got to Voltron, and so I would just sit and watch Kimberly and Josh do their ADR work and be like, okay, teach me. Teach me now. <laughs> teach me. You're I didn't feel like I needed to teach you anything. You just went and ran with it. That's because I watched you for like an hour. <laughs> you did great. It was Thank awesome. You. What's your name? Hey. Hi, I'm Christina. Hi, Christina. So, one, Bex, I love your flower crown. Thank you. And also, I saw your recent post with Josh doing like the backpack kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, was it like a fan asked you to do that? Or oh, no. No, no, no. This is just how we are. This is what we do. It was, there was music playing in the, in, the, in the tent next to us. I was wearing a backpack. And it was great. It was just perfect timing. Also, he got his shoulder fixed just for that. Yeah. It's still not completely fixed. So, Well, it's not completely recovered, so I can't quite, you know, floss super great, but one day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hey. Well, hi again, Bex. I saw you earlier. Hi. Um, so, first of all, I want to say thank you for, like, inspiring people like me to go into voice acting. Now I work... Now I get to work with an amazing cast on a parody of Soul Eater Not, so that's awesome. a lot of fun. Oh. Um, and I'd like to ask, like, what are future roles that you'd like to have? Like, I know I asked you on Thursday that you'd like more, like, antagonists. Sure. Yes. And stuff, but yeah. what are things that the rest of you would want to do? I want to be a sexy lady. I never get to be <laughs> sexy ladies. And I want to be a sexy one. I'm always like little kids and boys. <laughs> yeah, same. You know, and teenagers, but like never, never is that. I want to be like that, which I, I'm not really that voice type, so that's probably why I don't get them. But that would be like a dream for me to like play like a sexy, strong woman like that. Right? That'd be fun. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I want to I wanna play with accents. So... Really, anything they'll let me do because any sort of cartoon voice makes me happy. I'm, I'm, I'm way too easy. Oh, man. <laughs> I need some standards, guys. <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely... I want to get a chance to do everything. That's kind of who I am as a person. I want to I wanna try everything before I die. And so I want to see what characters I can get my hands on. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Oh, man, come on. I like that. I like that. Attack on Titan outfit there. Okay, now work. All right. Uh, so um, I haven't noticed that Brittany hasn't been talking a lot. So I probably might um, uh, ask you a specific question. Um, when, you're, when you're voicing guy characters uh, mostly, what, what's going on like, like within your head? Like, um, what's the specific changes that you had to do in order to match that, char um, match that character? I'm sorry. So I, I just either do, I only really have a couple of them in there for the boy voices. I, you know, a little bit of a higher and younger, sweeter version, and then a little bit of a lower Black Star, like, gruff sound. Um, when I auditioned for Black Star, I'd never done a boy character. And we were in my friend's closet, and he was just like, what the hey, do it. And we were kind of joking a little bit. We were just trying to make them laugh. Like, we just thought it would be funny to make them laugh, because we were like, oops, they attached this. <laughs> um, and then we booked it, and I was like, what? Um, but I was actually... My little brother used to answer the phone when my friends would call when we were kids, and he would try to make his voice really deep. And he always kind of sounded like a surfer a little bit, and it was just kind of goofy. I was kind of channeling that. I was trying, that was where it was for me. Um, it's like this just super cocky, um, stinky boy. And I just, I don't know. And when I recorded, I kept squatting because I felt like I needed to have a really low center of gravity for some reason. And then I just kept getting underneath the mic and I kept having to move it. And I, please stop squatting. But I just kept doing it. I don't know. Yeah. That's, a, that's actually a good, uh, a good thing is, uh, that, that she's mentioning is, is uh, physicality and how the physicality can help your character voice and really put you there. 
Absolutely. That's a, that's a, really, a really good tip. Thank you. Right. Use what Hello. works. Hi. Hey. So, uh, so what I said earlier, what you guys said earlier, that anybody can be a voice actor, which is actually true. You can actually, you know, record your own voice on on YouTube or use SoundCloud or even use a program like Audacity to actually make your own voices and all that. And and since it's now it's easier to like, you know, to work with a studio, especially in video games, anime and movies and TV shows, especially with how the video game industry and the anime industry is growing and that you can now, you know, especially indie developers are gathering together, hiring and they need to, and they need to hire some voice actors to, or actresses to actually voice on their own video games and all that. So I was wondering, like, you know, how, like, it's very interesting, like, you know, voice acting is actually a big role for, especially in entertainment industry, just like, you know, for when it comes to technology industries, anybody can code, like, you, you program your own project, and you can actually share it across the world, and it's the same thing with voice acting, like, if you can voice act in a good game, or in a good movie, or in a good anime, you would definitely would, would get that role, and you'll, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll make everybody, you know, inf have people influence you of your voice acting career. So it's a very, you know, interesting, you know, how, how voice acting, you know, is pretty much, you know, a, a big role in the, in the community and all that. And now you can even find local voice actors and actresses in cons or, and even yeah. with, in game jam and all that. So it's like, it's, right. it's a very interesting. It's, it's a lot guys, of different places yeah, that like, it can, got, it yeah. can go into. So yeah. what are your thoughts that since voice acting is like a big, a big role in the industry and all that? I think I'm you pretty much confused. covered it. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I think, I think, you, I think, I think you pretty you much covered it. told us our thoughts. It was good. <laughs> I think, yeah. yeah no. so, well, well, there's lots of different a avenues that you yeah. can explore. And I'm sure that they probably agree. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the, right, there's, there's just that much more work. Yeah. There's that yeah. much more work to audition for. Absolutely. Especially We're actually running out of time, too. folks. So um, if you guys can do your questions really, really quick, it'll probably take about three or four more questions. I apologize. Uh, go ahead and pop up. Thank you very much. Hi. Hey. Hi. Um, so I'm going to take away all the, you know, professional questions and I'm going to ask the trash question because that's what I am. Um, Josh, have you ever been to, uh, to the basement? Yeah. There's pinball down there. <laughs> we like it down there. I like have you it. not realized that? It's fun. All it's the cool not kids punishment are down there. like we like we think like no. you know like oh, bars no, and you guys are all the starved because really no. we don't really spoil anything. No, we really uh, you're don't. behaved, Jeremy. On the other hand, <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> but I mean, he hasn't really spoiled anything major. Yeah, none of us have actually spoiled anything. Yeah, the biggest spoiler in the show was that one picture that one of the actresses posted that. Yeah. Uh, that that had Matt and uh, Shiro and and uh, you know, that's really been the only spoiler. Really so the, the basement biggest, is yeah. just where we go when it's we like make a hangout. trolling comments, where we go hang out and <laughs> yeah. laugh. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. where we mess around with you guys. Thank you for <laughs> satisfying my need to be garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Hello. I saw you on the bathroom on the way here. So hello oh, again. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> Well, it, was, it, it was outside the back. It was outside. Do not worry. I'm not that person. Um, and hello, Bex. I saw you earlier. I wanted to give you $50 in order for you to answer my spoiling questions. Okay. Yes. Um, she shoved it back in my bag. Okay. I did. <laughs> Let me pay your bills, Bex. I swear to God. Okay. Um, do you ever find yourself bringing parts of your characters, like personalities or quirks, into like your own self? Like, yeah. Because <laughs> I know, Bex, you are literally Pidge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the meme version of Pidge. I am Pidge is already a meme. Don't worry, honey. That's my point. <laughs> but I'm not the smart part. I'm just the meme part. Rude. I disagree with that. We've had discussions. You're very, you're very you're intelligent. You're too nice to me. Stop it. No, no. We've had a fantastic Let discussions. Let me be self-deprecating. <laughs> I definitely bring it to uh, into my my life. Um, I would say that. Uh, when Shiro gets a little upset and frustrated, and sometimes my kids get a little frustrating, and Keith. Some, sometimes the voice comes out, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say a little bit. I, I, I think Shiro's a cool guy. I think that I, I, I try to live. I, I, I see a lot of positive in, in, in his uh, outlook and, and how he lives his life, and I think that he's a good person to try to emulate. I was uh, aggressively against 
dabbing until Pidge. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I caught that. And uh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I can't raise my arm like that. <laughs> It'll be another two months. Okay, we can take two more questions really quickly. Thank All right. Thank you. Hi. Hi. This question is for Josh specifically. Okay. For if, like, if Spectacular Spider-Man, like, if it wasn't canceled, and if there was a third season, what would a possible concept be for it? Well, I could tell you kind of, like, some of what he had planned. Like, I can't, I don't know the storylines exactly, but I know that each season of the show was going to be a year of Peter's high school life, and then the show was, they, they wanted to go, like, 65 episodes, and the 65th episode, or the, the end of the show would be him uh, graduating high school. Um, and they previewed a lot of other characters in season two, like they previewed their alter egos, so they would have definitely, I mean, you, you would have seen Hobgoblin, you would have seen uh, Carnage, you would have seen Hydra Man. Um, there, there, was, there was a lot of stuff that, that had already been previewed. So, um, yeah, there, there, was, there was a lot more story left to tell, but unfortunately we only got to tell two years of it. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, hi. Hi. Bex, love all the pride. Thank you. Same. I'm a walking pride flag. But, Pretty much. Um, I was wondering if you guys had like tips and tricks for voice acting. Just in general, or? Yeah. Remember, I had gone to your booth, okay. and you were like, "Go to the panel." And I was one. like, "I'm at the panel." <laughs> you can avoid popping your peas by splitting the air. Pa. So instead of pa, pa. you have pa, pa, pa. instead of pa, 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 pa. Oh it doesn't really work on this mic. Okay. <laughs> Takes away the implosion. I'm also holding it like right here. <laughs> No, this is, this is a very different... Well, that we was usually, a... We usually, like, they, they have mufflers on the ones we use, so that catches enough, but when we pop our peas, we'll take a pen or a pencil and we'll just hold it there. Yep, that's one. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, physicality. Physicality. That, that was a good tip. I mean, to, when I would... Well, I can't now because of my shoulder. Oh, but when he does the grunt work for Shiro, that's what I was talking about, is he'll, like, grab himself and... Uh, uh, and I'm like, that's yeah. how you do it. Okay. Yeah. No, like I'm, I'm basically like, do I, I, I'll watch, I'll watch the scene, the the ADR that I have to go through, and then I'll kind of make a mental note of, okay, you know, he comes through with the with with the blade, like if that the fight scene with Keith or whatever, he comes through with the blade oh, here, good. and then he he dodges here, and then he blocks here, and then he swipes here, and then he's running, 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 and then he goes and he he's got a punch here. Like I basically kind of have to figure it out and choreograph it in my head. Um, like, and, and move in a similar way, but not, obviously not full out because you don't need to, I'm not fighting anybody, but, um, I hope not. Yeah. In a, yeah, right. No, but in, in a way that where your body kind of makes the same motions, because if I'm twisted this way, any noise that's going to, and, but the secret is, is that you still have to have your head yeah, on you mic. Like right. So you're still kind of, you have to like move everything, but keep your head on axis. But it's like dancing. It is. It's very much like dancing. <laughs> but if I'm turned this way and compressing all of this, the sound that comes out is going to be much different than if I'm fully open. You need to use that physicality. And, and I mean, if you're, if you're dubbing something especially, match kind of the, what, what they're doing because it's going to help a lot. Like if I'm, and, and there's a skill to doing that without causing extra noise that shows up on the mic. You have to wear loose-fitting clothes. Mm -hmm. You can't wear anything that jingles or jangles or anything like that. You gotta take everything yeah, out of your pockets. Don't me. eat <laughs> certain things or drink certain things before yeah, you record as well. Or, and make sure that you no have milk. eaten before the session so that you're not growling because that all gets picked up on the mic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, physicality is, is a Do you have any thoughts thing. on this, Brittany? We were saying jangly jewelry. We always wear jangly jewelry in, and then I'm always like, why yep. did I wear a charm bracelet? What am I thinking? I, like, I just rolled out of bed. I put on a Batman onesie. I didn't need to put on this bracelet. Why did I? <laughs> and, and if I can just add one thing, acting classes, because voice acting yes. is acting. Yes. So. Um, I, I will yes. say also, if you do go get like an audition for anime in specific, um, do you. Don't do someone that's already cast, because they're already cast. Like, don't go in and be like Bart Simpson, because you're... Cause there is already a Bart Simpson, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, it's really cool if you can do someone else, but it's better if you can bring something to the table that's all yours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that, what, what is it that somebody, somebody told me, if you do an impression or if you're doing another character, then you will always be compared to the original. So you're really kind of just shooting You'll yourself in the foot. Lose. Right. That's some really great Say, advice. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Big you. round of applause for our guests.